ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد we find ourselves in the days of tashriq having concluded the 10 days of dhul hijjah continuing with the takbir al mutlaq with the takbir al muqayyad rather with the restricted takbir that is said after the salawat after the five daily prayers as is reported from Ibrahim al Naqai rahimahullah ta'ala that he said adraktu an nas wa innahum la yukabbiruna fi fi al ayad Allahu akbar Allahu akbar la ilaha illa Allah Allahu akbar Allahu akbar wa lillahi al hamd that i encountered the early generation of islam and i found them in the days of eid making the takbir saying allahu akbar allahu akbar allah is greatest allah is greatest nothing has a right to be worshiped other than allah allahu akbar allahu akbar wa lillahi alhamd allah is greatest allah is greatest and our praise is due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these statements are tremendous statements and they entail that a person has the highest degree of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the highest level of veneration for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as was mentioned yesterday in the khutbah al eid and this requires from a person when they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when they venerate Allah and hold Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in high regard this requires from the person something tremendous from his actions we heard likewise a statement of Abu Uthman al-Nahdi rahimahullah ta'ala as was collected by Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak and Abdul Razak al-Sana'ani with their chain of narration to Asim ibn Sulaiman al-Ahwal who said that Abu Uthman al-Nahdi said kana Salman al-Farisi yu'allimuna al-takbir Salman al-Farisi used to teach us the takbir for the day of Eid. For the day of Eid, what the people used to say on the day of the Eid al-Fitr, and the day of the Eid al-Adha, and then the days of Tashriq, and the three days after the Eid al-Adha, after the Salawat, he would say, Kabbir Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, miraran. Say Allahu Akbar a number of times. And then he said, Allahumma anta ala wa ajal. Oh Allah, indeed you are more lofty and majestic mean and takuna like a sahiba than that you would have a wife or takuna or yakuna like a walad or that you would have a son or offspring or yakuna like a waliyun mean of dhul or that you would have an ally because of some weakness from yourself or yakuna like a sharikun fil mulk or that you would have a partner and the administration of the affairs of the universe وَكَبِّرْهُ takbira, and glorify Allah and declare His greatness abundantly this statement of Salman al-Farisi رضي الله عنه is taken from a verse in Surah Al-Isra that the scholars they call Ayatul Izz it is the verse of honor and might it is the verse of honor and might one of the most tremendous verses in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the greatest verses in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ascribed himself to his creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught his creation how to glorify him. When Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he said, وَقُولَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدَهِ And say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all praise is due to Allah who has not taken offspring, who does not, meaning, have, meaning he does not have a need for a son. 
He does not have a need for a daughter. He does not have creation that he shares in divinity with that are deserving of a portion of worship as he is deserving of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala to be worshipped. وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ And say all praises for Allah alone. الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدَ The one who has not taken a son. He has not taken offspring. He has not taken children. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ And he doesn't have any partner to administer the dominion of the heavens and the earth and the control of the heavens and the earth or to share in the ownership of the heavens and the earth with. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ وَلِيٌّ مِنَ الظُّلْ And he doesn't have an ally because of dhul, because he is lowly and weak. وَكَبِّرْهُ تَكْبِيرًا And glorify Allah tabarak wa ta'ala with the true takbir. And glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the true takbir. How do we do that? How do we glorify Allah and recognize the greatness of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala as he is deserving of the imam of the scholars of tafsir in the fourth generation of Islam or in the, third, in the late third generation of Islam Ibn Jarir al-Tabari rahimahullah ta'ala he said explaining these verses after mentioning the statements of the Saraf al-Salih of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and their students he said, may Allah have mercy upon him. Yaqul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, وَعَذِّمْ رَبَّكَ يَا Muhammad, And venerate your Lord, O Muhammad. Honor your Lord, O Muhammad. Glorify your Lord, O Muhammad. بِمَا أَمَرَكَ أَن تُعَذِّمَهُ بِهِ مِنْ قَوْلٍ وَفِعْلٍ With that which he has ordered you to honor him with and venerate him with of statements and actions. Meaning, praise Allah as He has taught you and as His Messenger وسلم, has taught you to praise Him. There is no way that is better than that. And glorify Allah wa ta'ala, with your actions, with that which He legislated to his mess- with His Messenger وسلم, That which He legislated through His Messenger وسلم. A person cannot honor Allah in a way that Allah wa ta'ala, has not legislated, in a way that Allah has not revealed. A person who claims that they are honoring Allah and glorifying Allah wa ta'ala bima yukhalifu shara with that which opposes what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then in fact he is mocking his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is belittling his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he said rahimahullah wa ta'ala wa ati'hu fima amaraka wa nahak and along with glorifying him with those statements and those actions that he has legislated and that he has ordered us to praise him with. He said, and, and obey him concerning that which he has ordered you and that which he has forbidden you. This is the ta'adheem of Allah wa ta'ala that goes beyond the tongue of a person. And he glorifies his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala by obeying Allah and what Allah has ordered him with. And obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by abstaining from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden him. The great scholar of tafsir in modern times, Muhammad al-Amin al-Shinqiti rahimahullah ta'ala, he says in his tremendous book, Adwa al-Bayan, explaining this verse in Surah al-Isra, اَيْعَظِّمْهُ تَعْظِيمًا shadida," Meaning, glorify and venerate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the tremendous veneration and honoring. وَيَذْهَرُ تَعْظِيمُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي شِدَّةِ الْمُحَافَظَةِ عَلَى اِمْتِثَالِ أَمْرِهِ وَاجْتِنَابِ نَهِهِ وَالْمُصَارَعَةِ إِلَى كُلِّ مَا يُرْضِيهِ And that is manifested. And that becomes abundantly clear that a person honors Allah, whether a person truly honors Allah and venerates Allah and respects Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, by a person having a severe muhafadha, and he, he is severe, and he is severe in safeguarding the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and abstaining from the pro- prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he rushes and he races and he hastens to do everything that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is how we know that we don't, vener- that we don't venerate Allah as he deserves to be venerated that is how we know that we, when we say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar in our salah 
And when we praise and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these days, that there is something that doesn't connect between our heart and our tongue. There is something, there is a disconnect between our statements and our actions and between the statements of our wives and our children and their actions. There is something that is missing in their heart of the glorification of Allah and the recognition of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is evident in our slowness to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our finding excuses to leave off what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us with. And in our negligence concerning falling into disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Nuh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, mentioning the statement of Nuh and calling the disbelievers to Islam, مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارَ Why is it that you do not truly Glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La tarjuna lillahi wa qara. That you do not truly hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of His greatness. As the scholars, they say that because of the greatness of Allah, why don't you hope that Allah does not send His punishment upon you as you deserve? Why don't you have a hope that is connected to the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Meaning a hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you time to repent and improve your situation. Ayyuha al-Muslim, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he says after mentioning this verse, or upon mentioning this verse in his book, Al-Fawa'id, he says, مِنْ أَعْضَمِ الظُّلْمِ وَالْجَهْلِ He says, from the greatest of oppression, from the greatest of wrongness, and ignorance, and تَطْلُبَ التَّعْظِيمَ وَالتَّوْقِيرَ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَقَلْبُكَ خَالِ مِنْ تَعْظِيمَ اللَّهِ وَالتَّوْقِيرِ Is that you would expect people to honor you, and venerate and respect you, why your heart is absent of veneration and respect for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِنَّكَ تُوَقِّرُ الْمَخْلُوقِ وَتُجِلُّهُ أَنْ يَرَاكَ فِي حَالٍ لَا تُوَقِّرَ اللَّهَ لَا تُوَقِّرُ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ wa ta'ala أَنْ يَرَاكَ عَلَيْهَا Who really, you have more respect for the creation so that you hide your sins from them. You have more respect from the, for the creation Lest that they would see you in a condition and a state than you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, allowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeing you doing that which you are not shy to do am- amongst the creation. So why don't you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his adama, because of his greatness? He said, Ay la tu'amiluhu, la tu'amilunahu mu'amalata man tuakhiruna. He said, meaning that you do not. Deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a person who respects Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala Mujahid. Mujahid, he said, rahimahullah ta'ala, from the scholars of the second generation of Islam, explaining this verse, La tubaluna adamata rabbikum. You do not care about the greatness and tremendousness of your Lord. Wa qala ibn Uzaid. And ibn Uzaid, he said, La tarawna, li, la, la tarawna lillahi ta'a. That you obviously don't think that you must obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالِ بِنُ عَبَّاسِ لَا تَعْرِفُونَ حَقَّ لَا تَعْرِفُونَ حَقَّ عَظَامَتِهِ That you do not truly realize the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَحَاذِهِ الْأَقْوَالُ تَرْجِعُ إِلَى مَعَنًا وَاحِدٍ وَهُوَ أَنَّهُمْ لَوْ عَظَّمُوا اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَ تَعَالَى وَعَرَفُوا حَقَّ عَظَامَتِهِ لَوَحَّدُوهُ وَأَطَاعُوهُ وَشَكَرُوهُ He said all of the statements of the early generations of Islam in explaining this verse in Surah Nuh, they go back to a single meaning. He said, which is that if they truly venerated Allah and recognized the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if they truly recognized His glory subhanahu wa ta'ala then they would single him out sincerely and worship subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they would obey him and they would be grateful to him. فَطَاعَتُهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَاجْتِنَابُ مَعَاصِيهِ وَالْحَيَاءُ مِنْهُ بِحَسَبِ وَقَارِهِ فِي الْقَلْبِ And so a person obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and a person staying away from disobedience to Allah, staying away from sins and disobedience, and a person's shyness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
is according to the level of ta'zim, according to the level of waqar, according to the degree of respect that they have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts. Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala, likewise, he says in his book, Al-Wabil Usayyib, he says, Awalu maratib ta'zim. He says the first level of a person's recognizing the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and venerating Allah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves, meaning the beginning stage of it, ta'zimu amrihi wa nahihi, is that a person respects the orders of Allah and the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa dhalika al-mu'min ya'rifu rabbahu azza wa jal bi risalatihi lati arsala biha rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila kafat al-nasi wa muqtadaha al-inqiyad li amrihi wa nahihi. He said, and so... This is a believer who recognizes his Lord and knows about his Lord because of what his Lord revealed to the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he recognizes this message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this requires from the person al qiyad that the person that he submits, that he surrenders, it is the core of his faith, that he surrenders to the orders and prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنَّمَا يَكُنُ ذَلِكَ بِتَعَظِيمِ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ وَاتِّبَاعِهِ And that only comes about by a person respecting the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the orders of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and by following them. وَتَعَظِيمِ نَحِيهِ وَالشِّنَابِهِ And respecting the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and staying away from them. فَيَكُنُ تَعَظِيمُ الْمُؤْمِنِ لِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَ وَنَهِهِ دَالًا عَلَى تَعْظِيمِهِ لِصَاحِبِ الْأَمْرِ وَالنَّهِ And so, the respect that the, believe, that the believer has for Allah's orders and prohibitions is the evidence that he respects the one who ordered him with these things and forbade him from those things. وَيَكُونُ بِحَسَبِ هَذَا تَعْظِيمِنَ الْأَبْرَارِ الْمَشْهُورِ لَهُمْ بِالْإِيمَانِ وَالتَّصْدِيقِ وَصِحَةِ الْعَقِيدَةِ وَالْبَرَأَةِ مِنَ النِّفَاقِ الْأَكْبَرِ he said, and according to this honor that he has, and this respect that he has for the orders and prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be from the righteous, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has attested to their faith, and has attested to the fact that they believe what they say that they believe, and that their creed is a valid, genuine creed. akbar, And that they are free of major hypocrisy. That they are free of major hypocrisy. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make us from those yu'adhimuna haqqa ta'adhimi who respect him as he deserves to be respected wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyuna muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam alhamdulillahi wahda wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala man la nabiyya ba'da wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam He says, فَعَلَامَةُ تَعَظِيمِ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى Therefore, the proof, the sign, the evidence that a person truly venerates and respects what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered is the following things. رِعَيَةُ أَوْقَاتِهَا وَحُدُودِهَا Is that a person safeguards the time frames that are assigned to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he does what he does when he is ordered to do it. And that he safeguards the hudud, the boundaries and the limitations of those things. He doesn't fall short and he doesn't go to extremes in those things. And he investigates and studies his religion concerning all of the duties and obligations and pillars and rights that are assigned to each an individual action that he has been ordered with to make sure that he is doing what he is doing properly. And he is serious about making sure that he does them in a timely fashion. And that at the time that they are obligated that he rushes to do them as soon as they are obligatory upon him. And and that the person is saddened, and that he is upset, and he is remorseful 
when he is negligent in any of the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from the signs that he honors the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he is adamant and serious and staying as far away as he can from the places and instances that will cause him to fall into and the company that will cause him to fall into disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reasons that lead him to disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those things that summon him and tempt him to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمُجَانَبَةُ كُلِّ وَسِيلَةٍ تُقَرِّبُ مِنْهَا كَمَنْ يَهْرَبُ مِنَ الْأَمَاكِنِ مِنَ الْأَمَاكِنِ الَّتِي فِيهَا الصُّوَرِ الَّتِي تَقَعُ بِهَا الْفِتْنَةِ خَشْيَةَ الْفِتْنَةِ بِهَا And he flees from those locations and places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shamelessly being disobeyed and openly being disobeyed. He said like a person who tries to stay away from a place that has images and pictures. Now imagine that time of Ibn Uqayyim rahimahullah ta'ala. More than 600 years ago, Ibn Uqayyim rahimahullah ta'ala is mentioning this example that applies to our time more than any other time. With the fitna of al-suwar, al-khali'ah, and of shameless images, of shameless picture taking and the spread of obscenity and so on and so forth is everywhere a person looks. If he looks to his right, to his left, if he lowers his gaze, he will still see it. If he lowers his gaze, he will still see it. It is upon his mobile device. It is upon his computer. It is upon the billboard. It is in the magazine rack, in the newspaper rack, in the corner store, and in the marketplace. Everywhere a person goes, they see these images that are lewd in nature and obscene in nature. He said like a person who flees from those places that have obscene images, that he is afraid will be a temptation for him. And so he knows that there is something that will cause his mind to drift. There is something that will cause his heart to drift. There is something that will cause his imagination to take him to a place where he doesn't want to be. And so he stays away from that. And how much does this apply to the time in which we live? We have the devices of self-destruction, of social media, and things like Instagram and these other things that were mentioned. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, وَأَنْ يَدَعَ مَا لَا بَأْسَ بِهِ حَضَرًا مِمَّا بِهِ بَأْسَ He said, from a person honoring the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that he leaves, off, so he leaves off some things that may not be harmful in and of themselves to his religion, because they may lead him to things that are harmful. He leaves off laughing too much. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَا تُكْثِرُ الضَّحَكْ فَإِنَّ كَثْرَةُ الضَّحَكْ تُمِيتُ الْقَلْبِ don't laugh too much, for very laughing too much kills the heart. He leaves off eating too much, sleeping too much, drinking too much, socializing too much, things that were dead in his heart, and weaken his heart, and busy his heart, away from honoring his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, and giving importance to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered him to give importance to. And he leaves off excessiveness and that which is permissible out of fear that it will lead him to falling into what is disliked. And from his respect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by respecting Allah's prohibitions is that he stays as far away as possible from those who openly disobey Allah and who justify and glorify disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and invite others to it and make light of it and don't care what they fall into of disobedience. فَإِنَّ مُخَالَتَةَ مِثْلِ هَذَا دَعِيَةٌ إِلَى صَحَّةِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَغَذَبِهِ For verily intermingling with people that are like that, socializing and befriending, socializing with and befriending people that are like that, is something that brings about the wrath of Allah and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the person. وَلَا يُخَارِتُهُ إِلَّا مَنْ سَقَتَ مِنْ قَلْبِهِ تَعْظِيمُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ wa ta'ala wa hurumatuh. And no one intermingles and socializes with people that are like that, except for a person who has lost the respect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart and has lost respect for what is respected to Allah, respectable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart. 
وأن يجد في قلبه حزنا وكسرة إذا عصي الله سبحانه وتعالى في أرضه from the sign that the person respects Allah by respecting Allah's prohibitions is that the person feels sadness in his heart and he feels heartbroken he said when, he, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is disobeyed in his earth وَلَمْ تُضْلَعْ بِإِقَامَةِ حُدُودِهِ وَأَوَامِرِهِ and when the earth is not filled with the respect of Allah's boundaries and the respect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders وَلَمْ يَسْتَتِعْ هُوَ أَنْ يُغَيِّرَ ذَانِكِ when the person realizes that he doesn't have the ability to change any of that, the person feels heartbroken. And so we say this reminding ourselves in these days as we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the salawat al-khams, after the five salawat with Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. The scholars, they mention the person who safeguards his five daily prayers and the person who safeguards the nawafil, then just in his salat, he will glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almost 450 times in a day. With the takbir saying Allahu Akbar that many times in the day. The person who calls the adhan and who calls the iqama, on top of that they say collectively he will say Allahu Akbar by itself almost 500 times in a day. How many people say this statement? Well, very little goes through their heart and very little connects to their actions concerning the reality of this statement. We need to respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we want to be respected by the creation. We need to venerate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that are His allies. And make us of those that are honored by Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yawm al On the day of meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-huda wa tuqa wa al-afaf wa al-ghina. Oh Allah indeed we ask you for guidance. And for a taqwa and for fear of you. And for chastity and staying away from sin and disobedience. And for self-sufficiency and contentment concerning your religion. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya ala salam. Hayya ala al-falam. Qadikamati salam. Qadikamati salam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah.